everyone. I'm Jim from Andes. Uh, it's great to be here to share with you about Andes' work on major extension. Today, we will go over through the motivation why we need major extension. And then we will discuss about proposed and is proposed the major extension in traction cell architecture. We will discuss about how we can efficiently co work with cache based memory subsystem. And also, we will point out that how the boundary can be also easily managed. And finally, we will give some uh, model or kernel landing performance numbers for discussion. Uh, it's no doubt that uh, machine learning requires intensive matrix and tensor computation. That's why we need a new matrix tension that can provide friendly programming model. And also, it should be able to seamlessly data we change with the fa legacy factor unit. And also, it should provide the software portability, the source label, or a binary label for feed agnostic. And also, it's crucial for keep the data locality to maximize your compute intensity to minimize your bandwidth requirement. And also, based on this uh, high compute intensity, the merit, you can expect it that your MAC utilization rate in your kernel will be boosted. And you will see that your workload, the cycles, is shrinked down. And also, we will cover how the boundary can easily to management to, to, to achieve almost zero overhead. And this provides a very friendly and easy to use framework for customized interface. We have SRVV that user can realize their matrix extension arithmetic unit based on SRVV framework. We also have streaming port that user can realize his low store instruction and uh, co work seamlessly with external memory, either by DMA or by cache system. With this kind of framework, it's easy to co design, co evaluate with your legacy factor unit to see how your model can speed up based on your concept. Okay? Um, First the topic we discuss about is the software scalability. Uh, we think if we want to do matrix operation based on integrated matrix tension, the architecture state should be flexible management, and it should be very easy to form your high compute intensity as a square accumulation output. In the meantime, you should be able to provide very easily to co-work with your cache system. Simply say, like this example shown, that we, you, we can easily use group of registers to form a square output as shown in this patch. And it should be also can specify by your instruction set to portionalize your matrix input to specify which output to generate output. More explicitly explain the idea is uh, quite commonly you can see the publicly maybe uh, in the uh, in this configuration as a one uh, 128 you can find a configuration the matrix modification like this way and uh, adapt with the idea for this instruction set you can easily scale up for longer VLAN as shown here in 256. And then the same idea can apply for 5, 12, and 1024. This idea can apply for longer VLAN shown in this patch. Okay? And not only single precision can be supported, but also the mixed precision can be supported based on this instruction set. Say, if we take a general quantized AI model as an integer at a convolution and the widening 4x to integer 32, commonly you can find in public, maybe a lot of people design their matrix multiplication like this way. And uh, you can apply this rule to longer VLAN as shown in this page, and the VLAN 512. So it's easy and straightforward to migrate your source code to different VLAN machine. Okay. 
with this kind of concept, you can get a lemma to illustrate that your idea. You can find the optimal edge. Here shows a square root or minimum, minimize, uh, minimum square that you can form. And uh, you can find your L. L here denotes for the different VLAN, how many words in your VLAN. And you can easily derive the compute intensity shown in this patch. The M tilt and N tilt shown here means that the software designer, software programmer can easily leverage the standard RVV like LMO and running to boost your compute intensity to near optimal shown here. Okay? And if you, based on this concept, you can see that if you do nothing, you cannot gain more compute intensity along with the VLAN increase from the lower to higher. You will get the red, uh, the green line and the red line. But with this kind of instruction set, it's easily by this kind of architecture gain can gain the compute intensity. For example, for 1024, it's around the compute intensity. It means that the unit memory load, the supported Mac, what you can provide it, can boost from around uh, 2.5 to 50. This kind of architecture gain can inhibit dramatically for your workload cycle string down. Later, we'll show about it. And so far, right now, we are talking about how we do the matrix efficiently with arithmetic unit. Now, we talk about that, how we manage our memory subsystem. Naively, usually, uh, we implement like matrix A multiplied matrix B and accumulate with matrix C like this way. And you will find that if you do nothing, the matrix B shown here will be color major access through your memory. It's very clear that you suffer a lot for your cache locality because each row in your cache fetched, only a portion is utilized. So, and not only the cache locality is suffered, but also you suffer that general cache hardware prefetch engine cannot easy to learn this kind of access pattern. They say uh, amount of linear access and then big jump, big try, and uh, then a linear amount of linear access and then jump again. So how about that we address this issue to do A multiplied by B transpose? And uh, you can see that with this kind of scheme, it's easy to address the address, uh, uh, to address that the data locality is kept. And the, for general, uh, cache prefetch engine is easy to run the, the access pattern that shown this way. The only overhand you pay for this kind of management that you do cannot directly multiply with your matrix A tile shown here, and with matrix B, you have need additional impress transpose in your VIF, and then you can get the same result as previous one as A multiplied by B directly. But you don't need to worry about this impress VIF transpose, the overhang cost, because in general, DOE issue machine is easy to hide this additional transpose operation simultaneously with your computation, okay? And so far we're talking about how the matrix B we operate. Uh, if, we, if you deep dive our proposed architecture, you will find that this architecture has a benefit is that you can easily do the early start to early start your calculation because each Output register only data dependency with one single portion as shown here. It means that you can, um, uh, and with some tricks for your address post increment management, it should be it, it, the, for the load for this matrix A or shown VS1 here is easy to focus on your micro architecture to focus on only the portion law, how to effective portion law, the green part is shown here, okay? So, uh, furthermore, that this architecture also provide 
a benefit that we do not need to load all the register and the style of computation. The load to use latency is mitigated by final granularity for each portion, okay? Not only this kind of tricks that pro software programmer or the architecture can benefit. Uh, uh, based on this low store instruction, it's easy for software programmer to leverage the standard RVB provide advanced feature like Elmo or Enrolling. Here is an example that shows e software programmer can easily to use Elmo 4 and Enrolling to elegant and efficient all to use all the 32 factor register available to form a very efficient kernel matrix multiplication, mat matrix multiplication kernel as shown in this page, okay? And let's dive more for the programming model provided by programmer. It's easy that user can just simply preload your matrix B as shown here. And uh, simultaneously, when you do your computation, you can load the next portion as shown that what we mentioned, the effective 2D load here. And uh, after the convolutional result is, uh, and uh, after the convolutional result is generated, thanks for the integrated matrix extension, you do not need to store all your result to memory. Usually, you can pass over or hand over to standard factor unit seamlessly without additional data copy or register movement. You can simply pass over the quantization requirement operation, usually following by convolutional layer. And the final point that I want to share today is about how we can easily and elegantly manage the boundary. It's known that for standard RVB, it provides the VLCSR. It's very simple and easy to use and very elegantly to describe the residue part of 1D factor. But you will find that this 1D factor VLCSR is not well work for this kind of multi-dimensional matrix or tensor operation. Thus, we provide multi-dimensional CSR is shown here, residue NKM. It can effectively to describe how the shape is left, how you hit the boundary. And uh, based on this CSR, the software programmer do not need to any special handle the boundary or any special intervene hand over this kind of boundary to other factor unit. And it's easy to cooperate, to cooperate with this proposed CSR with your arithmetic and low store unit. Uh, we understand that the boundary overhang could be diluted when your matrix size increased. We just do a simple experiment, even that uh, the matrix size larger 2,000 by 2,000, we still can see the benefit around 9% uh, benefit, okay? And after adopting all the techniques that we just mentioned, uh, we can see that for GM kernel here shown general for 128 by 128. And, uh, and uh, also as well as some convolutional 2D layer, you can see around three to five speed ups comparing with you do nothing by the standard factor unit. And the utilization rate can be also satisfied to around 70% uh, to 80%. Finally, we currently we are landing all of this skin on mobile and V1, very general convolutional neural network. And overall, we expected that with the matrix extension here and the edge chain. Edge chain extension is another proposed quantization based acceleration. After adopt all these new extensions that we can expect it, different layers can exhibit different speed operations shown here. Okay. And thanks for everyone's attending. 
Today we discussed about integrated match extension is feasible and is, uh, is a great that we can seamlessly uh, co-work with this factor unit and uh, software scalability is feasible. And also we discussed as, uh, how the compute intensity is gained and the Mac URA, uh, expanded matter URA. And uh, we also uh, show that this proposed micro architecture can co-work with your cache subsystem and how we can easily to handle the boundary. And uh, we also show some projected results for some uh, model landing status. Uh, today, uh, this is all my today's presentation. Thanks everyone. And, and I, will be all, I, I will be the poster region on Thursday. Maybe not much time left for the question. Maybe we can have deeply discuss about this on Thursday in the post region. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.